Hello my convicts, yes it is I, the Kappa Convict, bringing you guys another video and today is my tech video and it's going to be straight to the point so let's get it on. As you can see, unfortunately I wasn't able to use my webcam in this recording because I can't physically do both and have the controller plugged in because of the front USB ports that decided to stop working on the problem I had with my graphics card. Anyway, let's put that to one side and let's get it on and let me show you how to install. So I'm going to take you through the full process of setting up the Narcon to how you use the Narcon at the end. So completely up to you how long you want to stick with me. So here we go. So first of all, go into your browser and then you want to type in the name Narcon Pro Controller and this will bring you to the site. You want to go to the second one, which is Revolution Pro Controller Narcon Gaming and this will bring you here. Now what you want to do is click login to download the software or it might say register and then click create my account. You then want to fill in your details on here and then send them so that they can set you up. I'm not going to do that because I've already logged in before so I'm just going to log in again. And once you've logged in you should get this page and obviously Number two is available in September, so it's already available Pro Controller 2. Once you've done that, go to the top to support and you want to look for your device. Now the device is the near to bottom and it's the eSports Design Controller Revolution Pro Controller and you want to download the software. So click to download the software and that will bring a prompt down here at the bottom. As you can see, it's a WinZip, so you need to also install WinZip if you do not already have this. It's easy, just put WinZip enter and the official site is a top link click on that download free download and then click on it once it's downloaded click on the winzip link which will be here obviously for me and then install it once it's fully installed you will then end up with this and then just double click and you'll see it should automatically pop up for you and say do you want to use the evaluation version and then that will be on there for you. So once you've installed, it should automatically kind of pop up like this. What you want to do then is close WinZip down. So you don't want WinZip to be opened. You want it to be closed. Then go back to your browser and go to where it says Revolution Software Zip. And you want to right click and then open. And then once you do that, it should automatically bring up the prompt. Use evaluation version. And it should all automatically already then put in your software that it wants you to unzip. So right click and you want to unzip and then choose your destination of choice, which I've chose the desktop. So I'm not going to do that. So you just choose where you want to download it. I have documents there or desktop and then click unzip. I'm not going to do that because I've already done that. So let's close down WinZip and everything on there. And then you want to come over here to where you've unzipped it. And I've done it. Where are you? It's here. Revolution Software version 1.63. This is what you should get when you've unzipped it onto the computer. So you want to double click. And it'll ask you if you want to open. Put yes. And then it will start to install. Now for me, I'd have to modify, repair or remove. For you, just follow the button mic, just keep on clicking next. Make sure that the language is in English if it asks you and just keep on clicking next till you get to the end. I'm not going to do that because obviously I've already installed it. So I'm just going to do that. And then once you've done that, you should get this Revolution Software. Once you've got Revolution Software, double click it and put yes. And this is what you should end up with. You should also end up a prompt here because there is a new firmware out at the moment called 1.59, which I wasn't aware of them having at the moment. So once you've got it on, all you need to do then is plug in your controller. Now mine's already plugged in as you can see. And that is what it should have on here is a red writing saying about on not connected that your Narcon controller is not connected. Once you've connected it, it should all disappear and you should just have this play button. 
So once you've done that, click on the play button and it will bring you into the main menu. So if you just needed help to set it up, there you go, guys. That's how you set up and bring yourself into the application. If you want to see how to set up such as your own profiles, what you need to do on each one, then stick around because I'm just about to show you. So now that we've got into the first one here, this is what you should get. You should then want to go to general settings and you want to check firmware for the most recent. As you can see, the most recent should be 1.59. So if you haven't got 1.59, you want to check firmware for updates. That'll contact the server. And for you, it'll say yes, update. Then you want to click OK. Don't unplug your controller and let it install. Once it's fully installed the update, you want to then click home and you want to click the stop button to close down your application because once it does the update, you need to close it and then reopen in order to use that update. So just do that, reopen it, and then go back in. And there you go, the update will be now successfully on because if you didn't, this here, which was the last update, would not show up on your application. If you just installed the update and went into this, this won't actually be here. You need to close down the program, reopen for this to appear. Now, as you can see, this is one of the profiles that I've just quickly put on here. Here you can change all the settings to whatever you want it to be. The radius, this is how sensitive you want the right thumbstick to be. So when you're turning, if you have it on a radius of zero, the, mo the most minute of presses would start to make your mouse go to the left or right, as I'll demonstrate here. So if I just slightly press it, oh, it won't show on here. If you just slightly press it, it would make your cursor move left and right for your head if you're playing such as like Black Ops 3. And then you can change the small, large, small, medium and large movements. Small movements is the most minute of presses. Medium is moving slightly and then big is going completely from one side to the other. So your small is just the little minute presses, medium, and then you've got the large, which is completely over to the other end of your stick where you're pressing it all the way. And then you just adjust these to match here. Response is how responsive and that's how far you want to travel. So the quicker you want it to respond, you want it to be going up towards there. And the less response you want it to be going there. So the more the joystick would have to travel across like that. That's the joystick travel and the response is how small you want it to be. So completely how you want, up to you to how you want to set that up. Just play about with it a little bit. If you're not sure any such as like you want my ultimate Black Ops 3 setting, if you search through my videos, there is one called Black Ops 3 ultimate setting and you can go on there and you can actually use that one and that will help you out big style. I will show you that when we get there. So when you come here, the lighting parameters, this is basically the lights of how bright you want the light to be, whether you want it on or off. You can then select the pulsing for your light. You can either have it constant, slow, medium or quick. Now if you notice it'll only be for the red light. If you've got it on blue mode, it won't actually work for that. Here is a rumble. You can test the rumble. Now I always have it off because I don't really want it on. Remember, if you do anything to click save and then you can go to the home and then I'll go back to home again. You can create new profiles by clicking create profile. You can then type in what you want it to be. You can go to Narcon's profiles. These are the ones I've downloaded from Narcon. So you could choose one, say for instance, I want COD Infinite Warfare. And these are what people have set up. The only problem about these profiles is you can't physically change them, as you can see, but you can copy down the details and then create your own, and then you can tweak it to how you want to tweak it. So if you think that the large is just slightly too fast or slightly too slow, then you can choose, because that response there means that the, the slow response is just slightly not as responsive, the medium and the long are just a bit more responsive on the response side rather than the travel of joystick and it's on radius of two. So it means that the small movements on this particular one are gonna be 
slightly less responsive as a medium, uh, as a medium and a big on there. You can lock each one by clicking the padlock, but obviously on these ones you can't change that. You'd have to create them. So you just copy these, and then you could go home, and then create, and then type your own, and then you could add a name to it. And then obviously if you go on there, you can change it to whatever you want it to be. Completely up to you. Then go to mapping. Mapping here, you can change certain things. So what we're going to do is let me go back to my profiles. And I'll just go to UMP because you need to be on your own profile to do this. Then you could go to mapping. On here, you can now choose various options. These are all the button presses. And for this one, we're just going to do the shortcuts. If you have shortcuts on, turn macros off because macros and shortcuts use the same buttons on the back and you can either use, you can only use either one or the other. You can't use them at the same time. So I'm going to show you shortcuts first. So shortcuts, if I press on here, will show you what each button is. As you can see, it's highlighting the button that it's actually going to be pressing. So generally I use this button here and I usually assign a button press to that, which for Black Ops 3, I use the button X. Make sure you press save after it and then you can click home. So now every time I press X on the back of the controller for this one, it will make me jump in the air for Black Ops. So I can use like a scuff jump. For triggers here, you can choose how responsive or unresponsive you want. Now, when you first start off using this, it will look like this. What this basically shows is this is the area where it's actually activating the trigger, where it's actually gonna make you do the, the pulling up your gun and firing is gonna be here. These are the areas where there is dead zone, is a dead zone. So anything from here to here is going to not activate anything. So for anything from there and there or there and there, there's gonna be no response. If you want it to have like a hair trigger, so you want it to be super responsive, then you want it to be here. So literally, if I was to just gently tap my controller or gently touch it, it would respond straight away, really, really fast to pulling up gun, to pulling the gun down. It would be like I've got trigger stops on my triggers. And same for the right side on there. You could choose whether or not you want one to be responsive, one not to be, depending how you want to play. Make sure you click save on both and then click home. And that's it for that part. If you're wanting to add on macros, as you can see here, I've done that already, but I'm gonna show you again. So what we're gonna do here, just to show you this one, it says left plus circle. So that means left and circle at the same time. Right minus circle means press to your right. Then after I let go of right, I want to then do a circle. So this is a sequence of button presses. This is pressing the buttons at the same time. To do that, all you need to do is first come in here. If I reset this, choose your interval. Now you need to know what the animation time is going to be. Black, uh, for such as like, not Black Ops, but say for instance, Battlefield 1, I wanted the medic to throw out a med pack and then attach the grenade attachment to his rifle. Then I would put it on medium. Then I want it to do two different presses so on to I don't know the actual button so say for example I want to the left that does a med pack and then I wanted to then put on the attachment I want to add that and then I want to put circle and then add that and then that puts the interval as medium so what's going to happen now is I'm going to press to the left I'm going to let go of left then I'm going to press circle and I want to do it in a medium interval and that's what it should do. And then click save and that will save it. If I was to wanting to play a game where I needed to press both the buttons at the same time, then what I need to do is put it as null, depending on what the animation time is. And then I want to then decide what I wanted to do. So I could probably do that left L2 and R2. So if I wanted to use my specialist in Black Ops, then I need to choose that. And then I want to add and then save. Obviously, it's going, it's going to put the, birth, the first ones on. So if I reset, so just do that again. 
like that. And there we go. So that will do L2 and R2 at the same time with no interval. So that means instantly it will press these two buttons together as soon as I press the macro it's added to. Now, as you can see, these are the macros on the back. Macro 1 and Macro 2. Remember, again, guys, what they are. If you go on here, Macro 1 is that one and Macro 2 is that one. So that's the front buttons here that are highlighted and not the edge ones. So remember that if you want a macro, you want it assigned on here. Also make sure the shortcuts are off and the macros are on, which is not going to let me do it on that one. If you go to UMP, where am I going? I'm going past it. So you want shortcuts to be off, macros to be on, and then you want to save that. Make sure that the macro is assigned on here. Actually, no, you'll need both of them on R. I didn't think you needed both of them. Okay, my bad. But if you put macros on, as you can see, these you can't touch now, but you can choose these. And then you'd obviously choose three and four. And then you can assign them to whichever one. Make sure that they mirror, obviously, the ones that you're using. And there you go. So then when you press those buttons, it will respond with the macros, click save, and then it will respond with these on here. Just make sure that macro one and macro two are the same as what you're using on here, macro one and macro two, and then save that. And there you go. That's how you use macros. Now macros are good for such as like Street Fighter and playing various games where you need to do a sequence, such as like a fireball, then you could just basically press down, forward, and punch. And then you can assign that macro by doing the minus one. And that will help you to set that up, which would be like this one. Pressing down, then pressing right, then pressing a button to action a fireball. And then you just need to press M2 on the back of your controller in order to do it, which would be this one on here. So hopefully that's helped you out, guys. I know people have been asking me to do this because some people have been struggling to actually still get this program to work, or some of them, again, in French. Make sure it's the English site that you go on to when you install the software. Make sure it says English if it does ask you. So take your time by clicking Next. Don't just hammer Next like a boss really rapidly just to get it to go through everything because you may miss something you may need to change. And that's it. That's all you need to do. And... That's all I think I need to show you. You can go into NACOM profiles, download the profiles. You can add from here. My profiles are all set up here. Uh, just make sure that when you want to add one, such as that one, you activate the profiles at the end so that it adds it. So if I wanted to add that and UMP, then I could just choose a profile on here. So could I profile one? And I could say, right, I want my profile to have NACOM. Uh, my Black Ops 3 setting on here, so activate that one. Then go to Profile 2. And if I want to have that to be my UMP, then double click on there and then activate Profiles. And then when I go to My Profiles, I mean uh, to Nacon's, uh, to the Controller Profile, sorry, it will show you then that my first one is number one and my second one is number two. And then just use the lights that are indicated here to scroll to the one that you want to choose, and then you can set that up. So these are the, each of the profiles on the front of your controller. And that's my Black Ops 3 setting, my UMP setting, and then two others that I decided to choose just to play about with. So hopefully this has helped. If it did, do give it a thumbs up, hit that like, and subscribe if you are new. It may sound a little bit confusing, but if you listen to it carefully, Hopefully that's explained a bit more into using the NACOM Revolution Pro Controller. So you know who it is, guys. It is I, the Kappa Convict. I'm signing out, guys. And as always, I salute you guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.